Hi guys and welcome back to the Academy of Historical Fencing. I often get questions about what sort of people actually come to Ohima Club, what sort of people train at our clubs personally, um, and therefore I'm going to do a video on demographics, which is going to look at um, a wide sort of variety of subjects of the sort of people that actually participate in our clubs. Um, it's not a scientific approach, it's just I've made some notes according to what I know of our membership and questions that I've asked personally without making it uh, too personal on an individual basis. Um, the AHF is based in uh, Newport, South Wales and Bristol in South West England and that will of course have a part to play in the kind of membership we have, um, geographically of course. Um, to keep an idea on numbers, at any one time the club has about 100 active members. Um, that's across the two clubs that we've got. The average sort of turnout per week is about 30 members, which gives you an idea about the kind of sort of attendance you might expect from a lot of students, is that not everybody is there every week. Um, in terms of age, we don't allow anyone below the age of 18. Uh, we do sometimes make exceptions for 16 and 17 year olds, um, if we've actually met their parents and got some consent from them and, and also that they can act in um, an adult fashion and, uh, and be sort of respectful and decent with it. But as a rule, it's 18 and over. Uh, about age, um, about 70% of our membership is in the 25 to 40 year um, sort of old range. Um, we get a fair number though of um, sort of 18 to 21 sort of students, although they don't tend to stay as long as um, I would say most other um, uh, groups that come along. Um, we get uh, a solid number in their sort of 50s as well although we have very, very few that ever into their uh, 60s age-wise. Um, gender. I suppose like every sort of martial arts club I've ever experienced, we are uh, male sort of dominated and therefore, uh, well, let's say about 5% female in the in our uh, grouping, um, which I think is reasonably good. I mean, I've been in a lot of martial arts clubs and experienced a lot, a lot more than I just actually participating myself. And um, it's always male dominated, so I think we do reasonably well in that regard. Uh, experience, past and present. Um, the sort of average experience that people have in our club is probably about one to two years of training. Um, we've only ever got a small core that have been with us since the start. If you came to one of our sessions, you might experience maybe one or two students, as well as Mike and I, who have been there since we opened the doors as the AHF in 2006. Um, although we still have quite a core that have been there maybe five or six years, but yes, the average sort of experience would be about one to two years. Um, past experience before in terms of HEMA when they come to us, I would say about one in 15 uh, um, students, new students to us, has trained at another HEMA school. And I mean more than just sort of one or two sessions, in you know, at least a few months. So the proportion that have actually done an amount of HEMA training before us is quite small. Um, in terms of weapon style and preference, the majority, about 80% who come to the club, want to pursue longsword. And I don't think there's any surprise to that. I remember back into the, um, the 1990s, and we were really sort of getting kick, you know, getting started with this in the sort of mid-90s, is the longsword, as in, you know, a sword in two hands, was not that popular. But then Lord of the Rings came along and um, and uh, what a kingdom of heaven and things like that and amazingly everybody wants to do um, sword in two hands uh, so yeah the majority who come to the club they want to do longsword uh, I would say about 80% although that quickly changes when they see what else is out there and um, therefore almost everybody in the club does um, something one-handed usually saber or something like it and about 60 to 70% are actually keen on long sword long term. Ultimately, as a club, we are quite eclectic and we both study and spar with quite a, a large array, a, array of weapons. So um, even though the initial interest might be heavily focused towards long sword, ultimately everybody is, is into saber. About 60 to 70% like uh, long sword. About 30% um, practice rapier. Uh, that's largely to do with the cost um, restriction just because it's so much more expensive to get into as a base weapon. Um, and then on top of that, things like sword and buckler, that's very popular in the club to the level that at the moment maybe 60% of the members do sword and buckler. Um, so what else have we got? Um, fitness levels. 
uh, a massive variety of fitness levels. We have people that come to the club that you know are mad on their sort of long distance running. We have people that come to the club who haven't actually done anything remotely fitness related in 10 years. So it'd be very hard to find any kind of patterns or trends on that because you've got some that are kind of, you know, yeah, barely ever sort of leave the sofa or, or their video games and actually are coming to do martial arts with us, which is, you know, obviously a very, very positive. And yet you've got others that are into sort of multi boxing and stuff like that and, and have done loads. So there is no real sort of pattern or trend to that. It's quite a mix um, of fitness levels. Of course, um, regular practice of what we do does really help with that. So um, that's, that's a good thing. Um, nationality. Uh, that's an interesting one. About one third of our members are not British. Um, predominantly European, but not British. Um, and that's a very high number. Of those, the highest proportion of other nationalities would be um, Polish and Spanish. Um, but we still have quite a mix of other nationalities as well. Um, and we have had others from other parts of the world, South America, recently um, Turkey, so a few other parts, but it's mostly, it's at a 99% European and about 30% um, is non-British, which is uh, really nice to see. So we get quite a mix there. Um, uh, about class attendance, most people in the club only come once a fortnight and some of them a little bit less. But there is the, you know, the dedicated core that do um, every session and some that even travel to both and, and do both sessions. But overall, I would say most people on average manage about once a fortnight. Um, then to social class, education and career. Well, social class is one of those things that is really, really hard to define. It's become quite mixed in, in sort of recent years. Historically, um, fencing was dominated by the middle classes and I would say Largely, it still is. Um, in the club, we have a almost never get anyone of the actual what you call upper classes, um, and then in terms of work in a middle class, it's going to be slightly higher on the scale towards middle class. But there's still plenty of working class people in the club as well. But those class sort of structures, if you like, they're quite difficult to define these days. So um, I wouldn't look too much into that. Um, probably better to look at sort of. Um, educational levels and also um, sort of careers and things like that. So um, higher education, about uh, 60 to 70 percent of the club um, have gone to university and graduated um, and, and then a, a smaller proportion have gone on to um, uh, you know other things after that. Um, in terms of careers, you wouldn't believe the variety of people that we've had in terms of careers. Um, personally, I am a, a sci-fi author, um, so therefore, you know, class me as an artist but in terms of the sort of arts and science mixes well we've got a absolute massive variety of people so um, really hard to actually nail that down because we have people that you know work on a sort of advanced sort of sciences and mathematics down to you know postmen and police officers and um, soldiers it's just a variety um, really really hard to say well you know this is the category of people that really come to the club it, it, it's quite um, quite broad uh, what else? Um, interest in history. This one has always interested me personally is that people who come to do historical fencing, are they interested in the history that goes with it and the history of the swords or do they just want to hit people with swords? Now pretty much everybody that comes to the club wants to hit people with swords but is there more to it than that? Do they want to know the history? And my experience is that about one in ten actually goes off and does research into um, military history and the sort of um, weapon typology and things like that. Then about 50 to 60 percent of the rest of the club is still keen to know when we will impart that kind of knowledge and just in the middle of a, a sort of a session we'll start talking about context, weapon typology, history behind it, historical encounters. So a good core of the club is really interested to hear that stuff even if they don't want to then go out and research it themselves. And then there's the probably one third of the club who just wants to hit people with swords and, and that's absolutely fine. So you're quite a variety, but I would say overall there's a lot of interest in the history of the swords, even if they're not actively pursuing it themselves. Um, oh, religious belief, um, just for a nice controversial subject. Uh, about 95% of the club is agnostic or atheist, which is about representative of the region that we live in. So um, that's sort of no surprise at all. Um, and 
there you go, smoking and drinking. We actually have a very, very small proportion of smokers in the club. Very, very small. I'm quite surprised about that one. I think it's in about 1 in 15, maybe even less uh, now, maybe even 1 in 20. So that's very, very few um, smokers. Although, uh, as far as drinkers go, we have a very high proportion of port enthusiasts um, and probably real ale and cider drinkers. So, um, yeah, certainly some enthusiasm for um, alcohol. And uh, it's actually very rare that we see a teetotaler in the club. I think we might have one or two right now. So um, certainly uh, alcohol and fencing seem to go hand in hand. Uh, last sort of things to mention... Um, what kind of interest do our people have in popular sports? So football, rugby, cricket. Uh, when I say football, I mean soccer for you Americans, um, what we call football. Um, there's actually almost no interest in the club in football and rugby. Probably about one in 20 um, is remotely interested in it. Some of them might play it um, for a bit of fun, but in terms of going to watch it and supporting it and being interested in it, there's almost no interest whatsoever um, in, in those kind of you know popular uh, sports, the kind of stuff you're going to see on TV all the time. So that's an interest in correlation within our membership. Um, and in terms of traditional sports, uh, things like um, riding, horseback riding and um, archery and things like that, there's a much stronger proportion of interest. Um, maybe about 1 in 10 to 1 in 15, something like that. So um, again, a bit more of a trend there. And what about other martial arts and combat sports? What else do they do? Well, when I talk about this, um, I'm going to talk about people that have either practiced at least maybe a year of training of something else or are still practicing it today. So at least a reasonable amount of experience. Um, so what kind of proportion do we have? Um, it seems to me that it's about one in five or six at the moment. Um, so yeah, something like let's say 20 to 25 percent actually you know yeah boost a little bit more than that there's a lot of people that come to the club that have done something uh, like taekwondo karate uh, muay thai boxing or boxing um, and sort of kung fu and, and it goes on um, and kendo and things like that as well so all kinds of martial arts and combat sports so yeah it's probably at least a quarter uh, it might even be a little bit higher than that Sometimes I don't get always you know, enough time to talk to people about their kind of other martial arts and other experiences, but I try and make an effort to, to ask them. Um, of course, it's always hard to tell when you, you talk to people and ask them about their experience um, to actually tell how much they've really done. Uh, but even so, I would say it's fairly high. And I would say you know, about a quarter, roughly, have done other combat sports. And there's also um, reenactment to consider, reenactment combat. And some reenactment groups do a lot of reenactment fighting, and some of them do very little. And how many reenactors do we get in the club? Well, I would say about one in five, maybe, of our members has or is uh, or does uh, reenactment, uh, medieval reenactment, or, or similar time periods. Um, does that cover it all? I think it probably does. Um, that's about all I could think of to kind of list down in terms of demographics. I'm sure you've got some other questions for me, um, and I probably can um, answer them reasonably well. I don't know everything about my uh, membership, but um, I suppose um, that covers the majority. You got any more thoughts? No, thank you. Nope. Um, so yeah, any questions, please put them in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.